Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I am very excited to do my first body jewelry company review. Today, I am sitting down and giving you all of my honest opinions about the company Invictus Body Jewelry. This is a company that I get asked about from folks online often, asking, is it good? Should I get it for my piercings? Is it safe? And we are gonna answer all of those questions today. For full transparency from the start of this video, I will be showcasing close-up macro images taken of jewelry from this company and another company. I purchased all of this jewelry with my own money. None of this jewelry was given or sent to me for free, and these are completely unbiased opinions, just me factually looking at different pieces of jewelry and breaking it down. We are going to be looking at two simple basic pieces from Invictus and comparing those with two simple basic pieces from Anatometal. So the first thing I look at when I'm looking at jewelry to determine if it's safe, if I want to put it in my clients, if I think someone should get it, is the material. When it comes to safe material for new body piercings, we really want to look for things that are implant grade. This means they meet ASTM or ISO standards for implantation in the human body. See, when it comes to body piercing, there aren't a lot of companies who want to spend billions and trillions of dollars on research and testing and FDA approval and all these other things to make sure that the stuff that we're using meets standards. The good news is they don't have to. Medical companies have already done all of this testing and all of this work when they look at metal that's used for implantation in the human body. For example, if you break an arm or a leg and things need to be screwed or held together while you're healing, they've done lots of tests on what metals they can safely temporarily put into your skin to hold your arm together that won't make the wounds take longer to heal, impact the wound healing process, potentially cause the formation of more scar tissue, metals and materials of the bodies won't reject. And this goes further for things like dental implants and hip replacements and pacemakers, ports and drains, anything that ends up left in the body long term has been very well studied and very well researched, which is really fortunate for us as piercers because then we can go from the existing medical and scientific research and use that for our own purposes. So for today's video, we're talking specifically about titanium. So we would be looking for material that's ASTM F136 implant grade titanium. Now it's very easy for a company to say online, this stuff's implant grade titanium. No different than it is to go to a store and have someone say, oh yeah, this doesn't have peanuts in it. But how do you know that it doesn't have peanuts in it unless it's been tested for it? It would be a real shame to find out by taking a big bite of something and going, oh, there's peanuts. In food, we look at ingredients lists, which are very well regulated. In body jewelry, we look at something called a mill certificate, which lets us know the makeup of the titanium. It's kind of like an ingredient list for food. But it's very easy for people to simply lie on their mill certificate. And unfortunately, thanks to capitalism, people do it all the time to turn a quick buck. So organizations like the ASTM and countries that have agreed to things like DARFA compliance have oversight committees and boards that test materials, look at mill certifications, and generally just all agree to be honest about what they're putting on their mill certs and what they're putting in things. So right off the bat, Invictus does have mill certificates that say, hey, everything we're using is implant grade titanium, but they're unverifiable, meaning they come from companies or countries that are non-DARFA compliant. They haven't agreed to work with all these regulations and these guidelines, and basically they haven't agreed to be honest about what's in their material. You might be thinking to yourself, why not just get a compliant mill certification so people know that you're using the right stuff? Um, that's what I would think too. But unfortunately, to the best of my knowledge currently, all of their mill certificates remained unverified. And a couple years ago, they were caught falsifying mill certificates. They submitted mill certificates to a couple different piercers, which were later proved to be edited documents or just false mill certificates that weren't actually for the batches of jewelry they said they were. So they've been caught lying about what their jewelry is made out of in the past. While they seemingly have the paperwork that would make you think that their jewelry is safe, it can't be verified, it can't be proven. So for me, that's kind of strike one. If a company has been caught doing shady stuff with their mill certificates in the past, or if they're not using verifiable mill certificates right now, that's already a red flag that I don't wanna use their products on my clients and I don't wanna suggest anyone purchase it. But let's just say, perhaps in good faith, that they've gotten their stuff together and the mill certificates they have now are accurate and maybe let's say tomorrow they're gonna come out with one that's verified. 
Now remember, this has not happened. Their stuff is still unverified. But let's say for argument's sake that it was. Let's actually get into the jewelry. Now what I did was I purchased two threadless librette posts and two threadless ends, a disc and a gemstone. In order to keep this review as unbiased as possible, I also purchased two threadless posts and two threadless ends, a disc and a gemstone from Anatometal. I did not take these from a studio that I personally work at or am involved with, and I bought them anonymously online from an online vendor that carried both Anatometal and Invictus. No one knew that it was me doing the purchasing and no one knew that I was using it for the video. So now I've got two Anatometal pieces and two Invictus pieces, and I threw them in a light box under 10x magnification and I took a really good look at the make of both pieces. First up we have our plain Invictus barbell. I wanted to get a plain barbell because it would really show me the polish of the jewelry and after mill certifications and knowing that the materials are safe the polish or surface finish is the next important factor for me when I'm looking at jewelry to put in my clients. We want to see a mirror surface finish when it comes to implantation and when it comes to body jewelry. We don't want there to be any nick scratches or imperfections and we want the surface to be really smooth and well polished. If it's not there could be areas where bacteria and debris could collect on the surface of the jewelry that could cause issues healing or if the surface isn't perfectly smooth as we live our lives as our days go on our jewelry is going to move around in our piercing and those rough surfaces can cause irritation during healing even so far as to cause more scarring to form now let's take a look at some of these Invictus pieces and at first glance you might be thinking that looks decent that looks solid it looks shiny to me but if you know anything about body jewelry, that is not a polish that meets standards. So let's compare it with the Anatometal piece that I bought. Right off the bat, if we look at the fronts, we can see a very slight texture on the Invictus pieces that is not there on the Anatometal piece. And on the Anatometal piece, the polish is so clear that we can actually see teeny tiny little Rob reflected in the disc taking the photo. And yes, all of the photos for this video were taken by the incredibly talented Rob. Their photography skills are next to none in the industry, and I couldn't do a lot of what I do without everything they've taught me. Now the more telling part is the bottom of the librette. See, these pieces tend to be machined out of a single solid piece of titanium. They're made on Swiss lathes, where the bar of titanium stock is drilled down into the shape for the librette, and then the hole for the threadless pin is tapped into it. And as a byproduct of this machining, there's what's called milling marks that typically end up on the bottom of our fixed back librette posts. And these are honestly very difficult to polish away completely. Take a look at the Anatometal piece, we can see that the inner portion of the back disc, the part that actually comes in contact with the client, clean, polished, perfect. Now if we take a look at the Invictus disc, look at these round marks that almost look like the rings of a tree on the back disc. These are milling marks, they're imperfections on the surface of the jewelry, and they're still present on the Invictus pieces, they haven't been polished off. That means that on a microscopic level, this disc is not polished and smooth. So if you're wearing this in your piercing and that's rubbing on the backside of your piercing 24 seven, that could cause irritation and issues. Now I'll give it to you, some people can wear stuff like this and be completely fine, but other people's bodies are so sensitive that that little bit of imperfect surface finish on the interior of that back disc could be enough to prevent their piercing from healing or even cause irritation bumps. And I cannot tell you how many clients I've seen who were doing everything right, taking care of their piercing, cleaning it, not sleeping on it, and couldn't figure out why it just wouldn't heal. We swapped them to a better piece with a better surface finish. Bam, healed piercing. So as far as things go right now, the surface finish on Invictus pieces are not meeting my standards to use in a client's piercing. But it does get worse. Let's take a look at the gemstone ends that I got. To start, here's the end that I got from Invictus. And if you take a look right here, it's actually chipped. This came this way. This was sent out by Invictus. It came chipped. And when I contacted the company that I bought it from, I was told that because the chip was so microscopic, it was considered an acceptable default from that company, and I was told they wouldn't refund my money. Again, this was done anonymously, so they didn't know that it was me purchasing this piece. Right off the bat, I hate that. No client should be getting jewelry or being told that it's an acceptable default for a gem to come chipped or broken. 
And yes, it's a very small chip, but A, from a safety standpoint, so much debris and bacteria could build up underneath that. But B, the gem just doesn't look as good. When you've chipped it like that, you've removed a bunch of the facets from the portion of the gem that make it look sparkly and bright. This gem is going to look dull in this person's ear very quickly, if not right out of the bag. Already not a fan. And then if we take a look at these prong settings, these prongs are not very secure. They're honestly very tall and lifted up from the stone and they're not holding on to it well. Let's compare this front shot with a front shot of our anatometal prong setting. The difference is night and day. We can immediately see that the quality of the Swarovski cubic zirconia, because these are both listed as Swarovski, is significantly better in the anatometal piece. We can also see that while the anatomical design is only a three prong design, these wider prongs are made to be more secure and we can see that they're actually gripping down onto the stone. We can also see that even the little fronts of these prongs are completely polished. Very good, clean setting. And this is a company that I know if I reached out to them and said, hey, this gem came chipped, they would replace it free of charge. That's considered a manufacturer's defect and they guarantee their pieces. Now things get even more interesting when we start to look at these settings from the side. Remember, we've already talked about how important polish is for high quality safe body jewelry. And that goes for the polish over the whole piece, not just the barbell. Here are some shots of that anatomical prong setting to start. And I want you to pay attention to how mirror finish and smooth this polish is. It's gorgeous all the way up all prongs and all the way across the back. The back being the really important part because that's the part that's gonna come in contact with the client's body. In comparison, let's take a look at these Invictus prongs. Oof, if we thought the machining marks on the barbells were bad, these are a million times worse. Let me zoom in for you and show you there's literally gouges on this prong setting from the machining process that have not even been polished out. This doesn't even look like it went through more than maybe a single rough initial polish, whereas for comparison, a lot of high quality body jewelry companies go through 20 or 30 rounds of polishing pieces before they're considered complete and ready to be sent to a customer. And if we look down the pin in the back, we can see the same issue we had with that barbell is here as well. Big milling marks around the back. So again, the part that's coming in contact with your body. Not only that, but if we zoom in inside the prong setting, we can see that they have just left that area unpolished. And a lot of lower quality or cheaper jewelry companies do this. They say, eh, it's not directly in contact with the client. The gem is in front of it. We don't need to polish it. But the thing is, Polishing the interior of a setting is actually very important for making a piece look nice and stay looking nice. When it comes to piercings, especially with an open prong setting like this, that interior area can still collect dirt, debris, bacteria, whether it's from the best quality company in the world or the worst. A prong is an open setting, so stuff's gonna get in there. But if the interior of the prong setting is well polished, it makes it a little bit harder for that stuff to build off. And more importantly, it makes it a lot easier to clean away. When the interior of that setting is left rough, stuff kind of grips to it and clings to it. And jewelry tends to look not as nice. It tends to stay built up and it's really hard for clients to keep it clean. From an aesthetic standpoint, if you polish the interior of your setting, it gives you a nice mirror surface for light to reflect off of. So when we're talking about a client wanting a piece to look sparkly and beautiful for the lifetime they wear it, a polished inside of the setting is going to keep their stone looking brighter longer. Let's take a quick peek and compare the inside of the setting on our anatomical prong and the inside of the setting on our Invictus prong. And once again, it is no comparison. There is just a massive difference that we can easily see under magnification. The Invictus piece is just not polished. And if we take a look at some more comparisons on that setting, ooh, it hurts me to look at these prongs from the side. They are so tall, they are so chunky on the stone, and they are just not well set down. I would be worried about a client losing the stone out of this piece much more than I would be out of that anatomical piece that has those bigger, more secure prongs that are pressed down a little bit tighter to the stone. 
tricky thing with body jewelry is that all of these images were taken under magnification. If you didn't have an incredibly well-trained eye, if you were, let's say, just a client walking into a studio and, an, oh, and, and someone gave you both of these pieces to look at in the light, you probably would be able to tell that the Invictus piece wasn't quite as sparkly, and you almost certainly would be able to see some of those polish differences, but not nearly to the degree that we saw here. So what happens is companies like this label their stuff as implant grade titanium, even when their certifications can't be verified. They say that they're using top of the line Swarovski cubic zirconia, even when we look under magnification, we can see that's not the case. And they count on the fact that clients are never going to inspect their pieces this closely. You're just gonna look at a picture on the internet or look at a piece of jewelry in the case, put it in your ear and never think twice. But when we actually take a look at these the way they should be examined and inspected before we put them in our clients, when we look at stuff under magnification, look at the polish, look at the setting, look at the stones, it's undeniable the quality difference. And all of these elements are factors that make a piece of jewelry safe or not. Right, obviously the material is a huge factor. If it isn't actually implant grade titanium, what else is in it? Does it potentially contain nickel? Does it potentially contain other elements that someone could be allergic to or have a reaction to? And then surface finish. Like I said earlier, I have seen people not be able to heal piercings because the surface finish on their jewelry was causing them irritation. Some people's bodies truly are that sensitive and certain piercings truly are that sensitive. You might be able to wear something with poor polish in an ear piercing, but trying to wear something like that in a tongue or a nipple or your genitals may not work out and those subtle differences can make a huge impact on a client's comfort wearing these pieces and also on their ability to heal with them. So when it comes to Invictus, it's a no from me. This is not lint approved. I would not sell this jewelry to my clients. I would not use it to them and I would not recommend they use it. Um, but if someone from Invictus somehow gets a hold of this video, uh, I would love to help you work on improving your line and improving the quality of what you work with. But what I'd love to see, because we definitely do need more quality jewelry companies in the industry, would be for Invictus to step up their polishing game and start really working on better polished pieces, slow down on what they're creating and do more quality control. There's no reason a piece with a huge chip in the stone like this should have ever been sent out, let alone ended up in a studio, let alone ended up back to me as the customer. And God forbid it did or something like that happened during transit, you definitely should stand behind your product and replace it. Why are you going to let someone walk around with a chipped gemstone that doesn't look that nice and your company's name on it? That's not good press or publicity. And then of course, lastly, industry compliant mill certificates. I know they're more expensive to get, but just like if someone with peanut allergies needed to make sure something didn't have peanuts in it, lots of clients have material and metal sensitivities and they need to know that if you're saying their jewelry is safe and hypoallergenic for them to wear, that it actually is. And that means being honest and transparent about the materials that you're using. Honesty factor is the big reason why I wanted to do this review because companies like Invictus have caught on to marketing terms like implant grade titanium and high quality jewelry, but they're producing pieces like what we just saw in this video and advertising them as the same quality as the Neo Metal, the Anatom Metal, the stuff that actually meets standard. Speaking of Neo Metal, just to round out this video, Suzanne Hallett from the Piercing Urge in Australia took some really good comparison photos of Invictus and Neo Metal pieces a couple years ago. And just to kind of prove my point that they haven't really changed what they're doing with quality in the years since, let's take a look. Now those photos are from 2019 and Invictus was brought to the attention of these flaws with their product back then, issues with polish and gem setting, and said that they were going to listen to all of it and improve. But all of the photos that I took from this video were taken recently. They have not really made many changes to their issues with polish, surface finish, or stones. So if you're interested in purchasing body jewelry and you're wondering if Invictus is a lint approved brand, the answer is no. I really enjoyed putting this video together and I really enjoyed doing this comparison work and, and I think one of the next purchases I might make for my home studio is a nice light box so that I can take these kind of shots myself at home and start doing more of these review videos. 
Now, if there's any other brands that you'd like to see me review like this, please leave a comment letting me know what brand in the comment section down below. And if you would like to support me doing these review videos and you want to buy me a coffee through my Ko-Fi uh, or donate to my Venmo or my PayPal, I'm going to link those down in the comments as well because I use all of my own money to buy these pieces of jewelry for these review videos and I purchase them all anonymously. That way there's no bias. They don't try and send me like their best stuff or whatever. Um, I just get two random barbells and two random ends so that it can be as unbiased as possible. Um, but that stuff gets expensive, especially because I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of different companies in my comments. I appreciate all the support you do, whether it's watching my videos, subscribing to my channel, leaving me a comment, or even sending me three or five bucks so that I can do more videos like this. You all mean the world to me. As per usual, please hit like and subscribe. It was awesome sitting down and hanging out. Cannot wait to hear what y'all think about this review video, and I hope to sit down and chat with y'all again soon. Bye!